We actually have Deathbird in the yeah, chat here question going, here. are you guys ever afraid of being pigeonholed about having a signature way of writing music, either in lyrics or literally writing music? Or uh, yeah. You go first. Answer. Uh, you know what? I don't get worried about being pigeonholed because I try to approach things a different way. Mm -hmm. Like... And, and and I've been talking about this all year, is, is that my goal this year was to write with different people and take different perspectives. And, um, you know, it was very important to me to, like, go and sit with Joey and write with Joey. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we had him here and I went there and, and then the three of us, we wrote and, you know, writing with Andy and writing with Dan again and 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 some of the other ones that I'm doing online like you know doing stuff with past guests and stuff like that it's just like if you if you if you're open-minded and willing to take suggestion and willing to hear other people out and learn different approaches you never have to worry about being pigeonholed because you're sure. learning, you're learning other people's process. You know, even even as as silly as it sounds, like listening to, um, you know, Silverstein a few years back did a companion podcast to a record that they dropped, and they track by track go and talk about the writing process. And they play the demos and they show, okay, well, this is how this changed and this is how this changed. And um, yeah, so like it's it's just if you're willing to come at things at a different angle, like something heavy, I was coming at a same angle a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's what made it sort of like where I was kind of like, you know what, I have to. I have to switch things up. I need to change things. I need to like approach things a little differently. That's why I kind of put put brakes on it a little bit. Not not because it's it's over or ending or anything like that. Right. It's because I can't I don't want to write the same thing every time. Mm -hmm. And I again, it's you know, even even writing with AJ a different way, you know, writing him bringing an idea in and me going, this isn't me on, this is not my song, but this is you. So let's make this the best it could be in right. that, you know? And yeah, I, I don't, so yeah, it, to a point, I guess, yeah, you do worry about falling into the same thing, but if you're willing and, able to approach things differently and, and talk to different people and hear what their process is about and then you don't have to really worry about that um yeah makes a lot of sense i think i think for me to try and answer that question i would have to say i'm if i'm worried about anything i'm worried about the people that i'm working with wanting to pigeonhole and stay in a box because the box works um, to the point where I like probably to a fault try and push so far out of that box that I need to be reined in sometimes. Um, but to that same token, again, I uh, intensely want to be the type of player and musician where someone might be working on something and they think to themselves, oh, you know what would probably be good here? Like a, like a Jimmy G type part to where I might get a call mm -hmm. and being like, what would you do here? Because like mm -hmm. the, the, this thing that you do is cool. I would love that to be a thing. I would I would love to get to a point where I've established um, some level of proficiency and uh, some level of respect to where there's like a, 
a thought to, hey, we need this thing. Here's this person that we know is good at it Mm -hmm. um, because it's what they do. And then I'm able to kind of like come in and do that thing. Um, So, so like there's like a, there's a yes and a no in there. Um, I don't want to be put in a box ever. Um, But I also, I never want to disappear into a project, but I do want to be able to mold myself to whatever style of project it's in and still be me in it. I want to be good enough to be able to shape what I do for whatever's there while still retaining personality. Um, I'm nowhere near that goal, <laughs> but that's my goal. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's awesome. I think that's really awesome and really special. And, and yeah, man, uh, I, I think for us as songwriters too, I, I personally, and, and, and I know you do to a degree, but like when I first write something and it's not quite there yet, but I know I got something, I absolutely have my, we'll call it the, the hidden tribunal mm-hmm. of, of friends that I send things to. And I'm always like, Hey, I wrote this. Like, what, what do you think? Right. What, what, what do you think of this? You know, and Jimmy's one of those people that I do that with and, and DJ's another person mm-hmm. I do that with. And, you know, there's other people too, but, but I think you only fall into a pigeonhole when you don't look for outside opinion and, yes. you, and you go and you go, this is right. Yep. This is the, this is the way it, it adapt, is. adapt, change, be open to new. That's 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 it. Yeah, you you gotta yeah, you gotta be open to just because something worked. Don't don't do it every time. Yeah, yeah, and 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 hopefully, hopefully the people that you trust and you send those things to will be able to tell you like, hey, dude, like. You, you're rehashing stuff like right. this is the same yeah. there's a lot of sameness here this yeah. like, you know um jen and i were talking about it earlier today actually on, on our walk we, we with the dogs it was just uh you know we were talking about pop music and um what makes us like certain pop music and not like certain pop music and different types and and you know I, I think a lot of it has to do with dynamic. Mm, and okay. I, if you've got a loop that's going over and over and over again, and you're just singing over it, then it, I'm going to be bored. Right. If you're going to do that, but if you're going to make little variations here and there, and you're going to pull up, you're going to do drop and you're going to, then yeah, then, then great. Like I listen, I think Sabrina Carpenter is, uber talented right mm-hmm. a lot of her stuff and yeah. is is literally just the same instrumental going over and over and yep. over again and it just stays here the whole record just stays here and that's it and there's a time and a place for it there well, it absolutely works. is it works but for, for a certain thing it works but right also at the same time it's you're like yeah, like it works, but also like where's the doesn't dynamic? work for a dude in his thirties? Sure, <laughs> that's where it doesn't work. Sure. It doesn't work if you have any electric guitar in your music, right? It doesn't. Right. Certain genres are, but, are there, but yeah, I, I think I think dynamic is important. I think that also bouncing ideas off different people is super important. That's that's you know that's what a producer is. Yeah, a producer is that extra ear you have. You know, in a band, you've got three, four, five people who think that this is the way. You bring somebody else in, it's a completely biased, unbiased ear who's going to tell you, like, hey, this should probably change. This should probably not change. This, you know, that's what a producer does. Like, right. that's why you bring a producer in. 
you bring a producer in so this way you're not falling into a pigeonhole. And uh, yeah, yeah, just be open. Just be open to other suggestions, other people's thoughts, other people's ideas. I think that's super important. I see we have a comment too from uh, our buddy Ziggy who says, as a musician that doesn't write lyrics, I always look to put a little piece of me in the music. It gets harder all the time because my influences are ever expanding. Well, I think, I think what you have to do, Bill, uh, Ziggy, is that I think it's very important to, um, and we talk about this a lot, not on the show, but mm -hmm. um, put your signature in, but don't, don't force, like, I need to get my shit in. There's a difference between a sounding like difference. you and getting your shit in. Yeah. It's a big difference. Yeah. yeah. And and there, it's a very fine line. But if you can get it, it's masterful. And yeah. people appreciate it. Well, and I think as far as the influence thing, um, we're all a product of our influences, right? So, I mean, if you say your influence, if, if we just take the two guitarists I named, because I know, I know Ziggy's a guitar player. So if it's like Slash and Van Halen, mm -hmm. right? If you're heavily influenced by Slash and Van Halen, uh, and this works for anything other than music too, if you're, you know, if you're influenced by two painters or two writers or two whatever, yeah, um, you're like you can learn every Slash riff and you can learn every Van Halen riff, and if you use those riffs in your music, you're going to sound like someone that's using a Slash riff mm -hmm. or you're using a Van Halen riff. Now, where you decide to combine those riffs, right? Say you're writing something and you take half of one and half of the other, or 80% or one, 20 the other, like wherever you combine those mixed with the way that you approach it and your rhythm and your timing, that becomes your signature and your style, right? Like, you you're not playing either of those artists work just by itself right. you're combining the works of things that you're influenced by and then your own technique is going to affect how you play it not like either of them and a little like both and when you combine those the 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 level that you combine them at and start using them and start hearing them and putting them into whatever you're doing. That's what makes it you. That's, that's what makes your style. That's what makes your signature.